We have cataloged 57 different species. Uh, you have individuals that look very much like you and myself that could walk among, among us and you wouldn't even notice the difference, except for some of the things that uh, they might be able to go ahead, even in a dark room, and touch an object and go, go ahead and identify what color that object might be. They would have a heightened sense of smell, sight, uh, hearing. Uh, the uh, situation is that you have various types of what we normally call grays. We didn't call them grays in the military, but you had at least three types of the grays. You had some that were much taller than we were. Uh, the unique thing that, th uh, that I'd like to point out for the most part is that the entities that we did catalog were in fact humanoid. Now this created a situation where the scientific community was trying to figure out why that would be the case. Because you would expect that if life evolved on other planets, that they would take on some type of other uh, being, so to speak, not necessarily look humanoid or be bi bipedal such as we are. But apparently, we've got quite a few of the species out there that are humanoid in appearance. And that creates a question that yet has to be answered by science. The live alien that had been taken from the 1949 Roswell crash was called Evie. For short, for extraterrestrial biological instinct, and all aliens are not called E.B. E.B. had a tendency to lie, and for over a year would give only the desired answers to questions asked. Those questions which would have resulted in an undesirable answer went unanswered. At some point during the second year of captivity, he began to open up, and the information derived from E.B. was startling, to say the least. And this compilation of his revelations became the foundation of what would later be finished, called the Yellow Book. Photographs were taken of E.B., which among others, I and Bill English were to view years later in Grudge 13. Why do they keep the aliens in a Faraday shielded environment? Because they have a tendency to disappear right through walls. And if you can prevent the transmission of electromagnetic energy, you can stop them from doing it. In late 1951, E.B. became ill. Medical personnel had been unable to determine the cause of Evie's illness and had no background from which to draw. Evie's system was chlorophyll-based and it processed food and energy much the same as plants. Waste material was excreted almost exactly the same as plants. It was decided that an expert in botany was called for. A botanist, Dr. Guillermo Mendoza, was brought in to try and help him recover. Those of you who have been looking for him on medical lists will not find him there. He was a PhD in botany. Dr. Mendoza worked to save E.B. until mid-1952 when E.B. died. Dr. Mendoza eventually, according to the information that I read, became the expert on at least this type alien biology. In a futile attempt to save E.B., and to try and gain favor with this technological superior alien race, the United States began broadcasting a call for help early in 1952 into the vast regions of space. If you know they're better than you, and if you know they can lick you, you better try and be friends with them, and that's what this effort was all about. The call went unanswered, but the project continued as an effort of good faith. President Truman created the super-secret National Security Agency by secret executive order on November 4, 1952, and until recent years, there wasn't one in 50,000 people in the United States who even knew it existed. Its primary purpose was to decipher the alien communications and language and establish a dialogue with the nation, with the aliens. This most urgent task was a continuation of the earlier effort and was codenamed Sigma. The secondary purpose of the NSA was to monitor all communications and emissions from any and all devices worldwide for the purpose of gathering intelligence, both human and alien, and to contain the secret of the alien Fed's presence. Project Sigma, ladies and gentlemen, was extremely successful. The NSA also maintains communications with the Luna Base and other secret space programs. By executive order, the NSA is exempt from all laws which do not specifically name the NSA in the text of the law as being subject to that law. How many of you know what that means? 
That means we have a completely lawless organization running around the country doing whatever they want to do, answering to no one, and under no law which does not name the National Security Agency in the text of that law as specifically being subject to that law by executive order. A live alien was captured in 1948 after a UFO crashed in America. He refused to communicate for one year and was given the name EBE or Extraterrestrial Biological Entity. He later began to communicate and gave details of his home planet. EBE had a large crystal which he linked to his mind telepathically and was able to communicate with his own race. He was also able to see into the past and future and perform many other amazing feats. He told of believing in the universe as the supreme being and stated that his race lived in harmony without wars and had nearly eliminated all diseases. He said they lived to approximately 800 years of age and that their technology was far in advance of ours. The authorities were amazed by the things they were shown through the crystal. EBE was able to communicate with huge spaceships which were holding orbital positions thousands of miles from the Earth. He told them that their crafts were capable of reaching areas in the universe beyond our imagination and that they were operated by thought control coupled to biological computers and consequently did not have any control systems as we understood them. He talked about his planet and how their technology had created a system where everything was self-functional and did not require a workforce to operate it, and that everything was monitored from a central control system. He said that technicians were present there. He said their power source was eternal energy from the cosmos. He told them that his race didn't have a government like Earth, but a society governed by wise elders who sat in council to make decisions of policy. They did not have a monetary system because the needs of the people were catered for by the Federation, which made them all equal. At the request of the aliens, a meeting was arranged with President Eisenhower in 1954. It took place amid tight security at a secret location. At this meeting, Negotiations took place regarding the permitted presence of the aliens on Earth. Eisenhower told the aliens that the world was not yet ready for them. Eisenhower witnessed an alien uh, demonstration of technology and power at Muroc Dry Lake, which is now called Edwards Air Force Base. I believe we made a deal, uh, and the deal was that uh, in exchange for super technology, super weapons technology, we would agree to ignore the abductions that were going on. He uh, made it more military-oriented than, say, a civilian president would have. And it's this, I think, that has let his actions, let the real power of the executive office slip through the hands of the president into MJ-12. The president of the United States does not have a high enough clearance to know the whole thing. And it's interesting to note that above top secret there's 38 levels of clearances. Eisenhower is the last president to have a full briefing on the alien problem. There was a disdain of elected officials throughout the intelligence and military communities and uh, they just didn't like elected officials. So uh, every president since then has not had high enough clearance to know the whole problem. Now they know there's aliens, they know we've recovered saucers, and they know that uh, we're trying to get technology but that there are certain other things which probably only about 25 people on the face of this earth know. Our United States government lied, did not tell us anything.